Sandeep, I want to come back and talk about the investment trajectory. You said a billion dollars across 10 deals in the first decade, $3 billion across a whole bunch of deals in the second decade. What can we expect in the third decade? And I'll ask you this in the context of our last conversation. And you had said that you hope to deploy between a billion to a billion and a half in India. But that hasn't been the case. So you're sitting on plenty of dry powder at this point in time. Yes, you know, last time we spoke was last Jan and I said that uh, we are open for business because that was a time when the global liquidity was really getting pulled back. Great companies uh, that had a real value proposition but didn't have the cash would need to raise capital. That has been delayed by six months, I would say, because some of those companies that had cash didn't need to come to the market right away. But those are all in conversations right now as we speak, uh, because there are some phenomenal companies being built out of India. And these companies will need money. And I think we are always there. We are open for business. We have a lot of uh, dry powder right now. If you look at the trend, Shireen, you know, we invested about a billion in 10 deals in the first decade. Uh, we invested about three times that in 20 incremental deals in the subsequent decade. And I have no question that we will keep that pace. So I would be surprised if we don't put to work at least seven to $8 billion in the coming decade across 20 to 30 companies. That will be the most iconic companies that will come out of India. And, and that's really looking back, I think what is success to us is if we can make this entrepreneur successful in helping them achieve their vision of building great companies that serve the needs of India, I think we as General Atlantic would have been very successful in the coming decade as well. Well, so that's almost double of the money that you invested and deployed in the second decade. Uh, that's, the, uh, that's the target that you're working with, $78 billion over the next uh, decade across 20 to 30 companies. Well, speaking of uh, companies and investments and news reports, uh, Shantanu, uh, you know, lots of buzz around companies like PhonePay, etc. Uh, who, who are you talking to at this point in time? As we, as I told you in the beginning, Shireen, we are very, very focused on the India digital stack. We want to back companies which are enabling millions of Indians access low-cost digital services and in a very affordable manner. And this is a huge theme for us. So we are very keen to keep investing behind this theme. And, uh, you know, for example, the UPI ecosystem, the upcoming Oaken ecosystem, the ONDC ecosystem, these, are, these will be huge areas of focus for us for investments in the years to come. So we want to back uh, the policy agenda, the agenda of the government in making low-cost software, low-cost India stack available to millions of Indians. Okay, Sandeep, you know, while we're talking about India, I also want to talk to you about what's happening in China. And we spoke about this uh, in our last conversation as well. And since then, uh, you know, the regulatory challenges, the regulatory headwinds, China looking much more insular at this point in time. And the expectation or the assumption is that that's good news for countries like India. How are you now seeing this play out uh, with, with the way that China has decided to move as far as uh, tech regulation is concerned and the way that India uh, is moving with its startups. You know, uh, Shireen, you know, if you look back and, and uh, there was a very celebrated report of Goldman Sachs which talked about the BRICS economies and talking about the next 20 to 30 years of growth and the, and the economies that are going to lead it. Uh, if you look at those BRICS economies, you have Brazil, uh, you have Russia, which is almost uninvestable at, the, at, at this point. You have India, which continues to be a shining light. China, just there's a pause in terms of what the policy framework, the regulatory framework there is going to be. And South Africa, uh, well, which again is, is having its own problems. Uh, India is truly the, the, the bright star, right? And as a result, it's not lost on anyone. And as I keep telling people that uh, the India story is very evident, which is why you're seeing so much interest in India today. My fear is that we don't get, again, uh, flush with so much liquidity that entrepreneurs uh, lose their way because of the over-optimism and over-enthusiasm about India. We have been long, strong-term bulls on India. And in India, the only thing that matters is execution, and execution by putting your head down. And that's what we are really betting on. You know, you gave the BRICS uh, example. And yes, Russia at this point in time is uninvestable on account of uh, the geopolitical situation with the war in Ukraine. But you said it's a pause on China. So uh, it's not as if investors are not willing to place bets on China any further or any longer. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a longer funding winter, perhaps? 
No, Shane, no, China is such a large economy, you cannot ignore China. And China will have a very strong domestic economy. The Chinese government is going to focus on making sure that the GDP grows uh, north of 5 to 6 percent. So we continue to be bullish on China. But we just have to wait and see how the regulatory and the policy framework plays out. Uh, but it's not lost in anyone that if you look look ahead, China will be one of the largest economy. And as global private equity investors, we will have a very strong dominant play in China. So that's that's definitely how GA thinks about our investments in China going forward. You know, Shantanu, speaking about regulatory headwinds, the government uh, in the last budget had announced setting up this committee that would look into any friction and pain points uh, that the PEVC uh, community is facing in India. That committee has now been set up. There have been meetings, and the expectation is that whatever the recommendations are will perhaps be carried forward uh, in this year's budget, uh, which is around February. Uh, what's the chief issue that requires intervention at this point in time, that requires uh, attention of the government at this point in time. If I were to ask you to list down for us the top three things that you believe the government needs to address, what would those be from a PEVC point of view? Um, you know, I believe, you know, having invested in many regulated businesses and many more that we are looking at, one of the areas that I believe the government is already investing behind and I would encourage them to continue to do uh, further is to have regulators which are uh, continuing to take a lot of suggestions uh, from investors, from entrepreneurs, from companies and have an open sort of listening attitude to making changes, being agile in creating the right framework for companies to grow. I would, I would say that's the number one um, area of focus. The second area that the government has alluded to, uh, which is um, judicial reforms or reforms uh, in being a ability to enforce contracts in a timely manner. Uh, I think what has been great is to see, um, you know, all uh, kind of arbitration awards from Singapore being enforced in a timely way in India. If there is a way in which that process uh, can be accelerated and brought to India, I would say that will be that will give a lot of global investors investing large amounts of capital uh, a lot more confidence. Uh, into uh, investing in India. Uh, the third I would say is just policy continuity um, on a variety of these, um, uh, in the variety of these uh, sectors and um, uh, uh, industries, which, which so far has been the case. And we actually see the implementation of GST, the bankruptcy code, and, and a bunch of other reforms playing out very positively. So we are very encouraged by the, by the way how responsive the government has been and has actually heard us as well as many other uh, multinational companies and global investors and in creating the right environment for investment. You know, speaking of uh, the right environment, Sandeep, let me ask you whether we are going to see a long pause as far as exits are concerned. Uh, you know, in, in, the current, uh, in the current climate, what's the expectation on that front? I mean, how, how much further do you push out exits at this point? You know, Shirin, if you look at the Indian markets, our stock market is almost at an all-time high. And that's because uh, not only uh, of, is foreign money flowing into the market, India is on everyone's map right now. Everyone wants to increase their allocation to India. And so contrary to what you said, I think exits are very much open in the Indian market. And you've seen us at General, General Atlantic uh, continuously having exits in the market. As you've seen one of our exits in IFL Wealth, which we sold to another competing firm, uh, we took our company uh, public in, in Kim's, uh, and that was a liquidity event for us as well. And there are a couple more that are in the pipeline right now. So the Indian market is very much open for exits, unlike what we are seeing globally, where the market seemed to be a bit shut, either in terms of IPOs or in terms of other secondaries that are happening. So in the Indian market, I, see, I, I believe that uh, from a GA standpoint, Indian the India office is going to be a large contributor to liquidity in the coming 12 months, and the Indian market is very much open for exits. So I don't think we should see a pause or a pushback of exits from the Indian market. You're, you're right in pointing out that the Indian markets have uh, uh, have, have seen a one-way up move even through a very tumultuous global uh, environment at this point in time. But let's talk about uh, the new listing specifically of the new age tech companies that we saw. And there has been significant uh, value as well as wealth erosion. Do you believe that we're perhaps at the bottom of that cycle? Do you think the worst is past? 
I think that uh, what was happening last year a little bit was just uh, uh, euphoria and momentum investing that was happening, which is why you see you saw us stay out of the market in 2021, uh, which is when a lot of these companies went public or the early part of 2022. I think what you've seen in terms of correction is the, is the right correction. I think companies are valued fairly at this point. So it's tough to say as a market, if you have called the low of the market, I think it's individual company based uh, valuations. And I think there are some companies that may still see the downside, whereas some company may be trading optimally at this point. But as General Atlantic, you know, we are very focused on unit economics. We are very focused on profitability. We are focused on profitability at scale with decent growth. We don't need to see hyper growth in these companies. And as long as you sustainably grow profitably, I think you're in business for a very long time in India, if you have a strong company and a strong founder. And those are the companies that we as GA like to back. And hopefully those are the companies that we will bring to the market, into the IPO market in the coming 12 to 18 months. Within your own experience with your current portfolio companies, uh, is there, is there, uh, of course, everyone now talking about cutting down on costs, bringing in more efficiency, doing the right things and not chasing growth, but chasing demand. Uh, you know, are you starting to see uh, visible changes even within your own portfolio companies on being able to get to the path of profitability? And what's the timeline uh, that you're, you're looking? What's the average timeline that you're looking at? Uh, absolutely, Shireen. I think across our portfolio, I mean, the quality of entrepreneurs we have back, we have backed, you know, read um, their opportunities very quickly and move with a lot of agility. We have the highest quality entrepreneurs backing our portfolio companies and running our portfolio companies. Um, they have understood that allocating capital optimally, uh, managing their expenses optimally, reducing areas where long-term potential of the business model uh, may not be uh, may not be viable. Uh, you know, cutting them off from uh, the business model. Are, these are all areas that all entrepreneurs are very focused on right now. Uh, I expect a lot of them to turn profitable in the next year uh, and a lot many more to start generating, uh, you know, free cash flows the year after. The question is, while doing these corrections, I think our guidance is not to overcut and, you know, remove areas which may actually have great long-term potential or lose critical talent in the business. So how do we move towards optimal capital allocation, measured growth, profitable and free cash flow driven growth uh, is the mantra a lot of entrepreneurs have already attuned themselves to. And we are very positive about uh, you know, next year and the year after in terms of uh, profitability as well as free cash flows. Well, Sandeep Shantanu, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks very much for joining us on this special edition of Young Turks. Here's wishing you and the team at GA the very best of luck. And we do hope that, uh, uh, that this next decade is going to be as exciting as the previous two. Uh, and we look forward to catching up with you again. Thanks very much for your time. Well, that's it then on this edition of Young Turks. For now, from all of us here on the team, goodbye. Many thanks for watching. NBC TV 18 celebrating 20